fogged up my glasses. Travelers, it's so good to see you. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be sharing five tips with you to help strengthen your patience muscle so that you can begin to master patience in practically any situation. Now, I know that some of you are not patient enough to watch a whole video on patience, so I'm going to give you the five tips right now. Set up a morning workout routine, meal delay or intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting, there it is, attention grounding, aka be in the present moment, practice controlled suffering, and don't outsource your happiness or your peace. And there you have it. Now you can go on about your day. For the rest of you who really want to get to the nitty gritty, who want to go in deep and really learn something to change, to have a transformation. For those of you who are after personal growth, for those of you who are after spiritual growth, for those of you who are seeking something higher, something better, let's get right into it. I was in conversation with the Great Spirit this morning and I said, GS, we're tight like that, I call them GS. I said, GS, please help me be more patient with people. Help me be more patient with my family, with my daughters, with my girlfriend, with my mom, with strangers. I, I need this patience, I need patience. And GS was like, hijo, quereres poder. He speaks to me in the language of my grandparents sometimes and I said, yeah, but it's hard. Have you ever done that? Have you ever yeah but somebody? They give you a solution and then you go yeah but this and then they give you a solution and you're like yeah but. Well that was me. I was like yeah but it's really hard. It's really hard to be patient with other people. And he was like oh son I don't think you know what you're asking for but I can do this. I can do this for you. I can give you the patience you want but before I give you this patience you have to do something that's even harder to do. Are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, wait, to be patient with others, I got to do something that's even harder than that? Okay, what do I got to do? You must first have patience with yourself. GS, my man. Have you ever watched Doctor Strange? You know how they flick them in the forehead and then their spirit just leaves their body and then they come right back? That's exactly how that felt. I was like, oh. I gotta do something harder. I gotta be patient with myself. Man, that's why he's in charge. <laughs> that's why he's that's why he's in charge. That's why he's the boss. Alright, travelers, so let's pull up the affirmation roulette and see what message we got for us today. You already know how it works. At any moment now, hit the pause button, see what message you got, and let me know in the comment section down below what it is. And I will go through the comments and talk to you a little bit about it. But in the meantime, I'm gonna pick one for us now. And stop. Ah, this is a good one. Answer the call, cross the bridge, bridge the gap, merge over, be where you need to be, answer the divine call. The call comes in many forms and it's different for each and every one of us. But the idea is the same. You've outgrown your pond. You're not a little fish anymore. It's time to move to bigger bodies of water so you can properly swim where you belong. This could mean that you're now ready to ask for that promotion at work or ask for a raise. Maybe you're ready to start that business you've been putting off. Maybe you're ready to start a new chapter in your life and get married and start a family. Or maybe it's time to start recording videos and finally get that YouTube channel started. Whatever it is, you're ready. Enough researching, enough gathering information, enough gathering other people's opinions, enough analyzing and enough procrastinating. It's time. It's time to take action and time to figure out what's on the other side of fear. Like Nacho Libre says, don't you want a little taste of the glory? See what it tastes like. <laughs> I want to encourage you and tell you that you're ready for what's next. Don't let fear stop you. There will be obstacles on their way, but none that can stop you as long as you're walking with the great spirit. What's next? has been calling you for some time now. Will you finally answer the call? I really hope you do. All right, so if you're new to the channel and you would like more conversations like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you can be notified when I post more content like this. So in my meditation this morning, I of course wanted more patience, right? I need more patience with people. It brought the question up, what exactly does it mean to be patient? When we ask for patience, what is it exactly that we're asking for? And I looked up in the dictionary and it says that the definition to patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without, here's the key word, without getting angry or upset. To accept suffering without getting angry or upset. 
so patience is like a muscle if you want it to be strong if you want it to grow you have to work it out daily you have to work on it consistently so then we circle right back to the original question how do you practice patience for those of you who decided to stick around now we're going to go deeper into those five tips all right the first one was set up a morning workout routine i personally prefer yoga while holding a position my body reaches a point where it just wants to quit it, it hurts it's uncomfortable. It sends a cease and desist letter to my mind, demanding that all physical activity come to a complete stop right this moment. It intimidates the mind into quitting, but you can make your body wait a little bit longer by holding that position and taking just a few more breaths there. When you make your body wait just a little bit longer, you begin to impress yourself with just how much discomfort you can actually endure. The same goes with, say, push-ups. Let's just say that you set out to do 20 push-ups. By the time you get to the 15th one, your body's already feeling the burn. But because it knows that 20 is right around the corner and it's almost over, it starts to sort of fall into a comfort zone. So you push it a little further and go to 22 or 23. So find some kind of workout morning routine that you can get into this sort of game with your body and mind. Force your body to be patient. The next is meal delay or intermittent fasting. The body behaves like a child sometimes. It has this discomfort button called hunger and the mind acts like a desperate waiter giving everything it wants. Not just giving everything it wants, giving everything it wants when it wants it. Now, right now. So pushing your first meal just a couple of hours, by the way, check with your doctor to make sure that it's safe for you to do that. But pushing your meal just a few hours and forcing your body to wait can help you be a little bit more in control of the natural urges of the body. A thing that I like to practice personally is like, say that I'm editing a video and I begin to feel hunger, I don't stop. I don't stop and then go get something to eat. I allow myself to feel that hunger and either wait until I'm done editing that portion or set a specific time that I'm going to feed myself. This helps me stay away from unhealthy snacking or comfort food, because we all know what happens with comfort food. Number three, attention grounding, or AKA being in the now. Whenever possible, bring all of your attention in and hold your attention in the present moment. When you're washing your hands, be engaged in the act of washing your hands. Don't think about what you're gonna do as soon as you're done, be fully present. Holding your attention back and inwardly can help keep the dogs called anger and frustration in the cage. So be present as much as you possibly can. The fourth is my personal favorite and one of the things that I actually practice the most, and that is controlled suffering. This is about purposely and consciously putting yourself in a situation that makes you uncomfortable with the intention of finding comfort in the discomfort. While you're engaged in the uncomfortable situation, you wanna look inward for the comfort that's hidden within. You wanna be able to complete the task without complaining or without becoming upset. An example of this would be practicing yoga, being in an uncomfortable position and trying to find comfort in your breathing, finding comfort in discomfort. You could also practice this taking cold showers or taking a pause to take a deep breath before you leave the house when you're already running late. You could practice this in the car by waiting three seconds after the light has already turned green or picking the longest checkout line at the market or picking the farthest parking spot in the parking lot. There are tons of ways that you could practice this. I'm sure that you can think of more. And last but not least, don't outsource your happiness or your peace. A lot of what we do as human beings is rooted in this primal desire to be liked and accepted by others. I used to be the type that I wouldn't leave my house unless my pants and my shirt were both pressed really nicely. I wouldn't leave without a nice clean shave and my hair had to be parted and slicked sideways really nicely. I couldn't leave the house without looking cool or looking good. I'm not trying to knock anyone who does that, but when I realized that my happiness was rooted in others thinking that I looked cool or that I looked good, I decided to take back what was rightfully mine and I grew out my beard, I grew out my hair, and I started to dress down drastically. I began to create my own joy instead of giving that job to other people. This is about being self-sustained emotionally and not outsourcing your joy or your peace and that your peace and your happiness doesn't depend on what someone else does, says, or thinks about you. That happiness and that peace is already in you. All right, those are the five and now here is the bonus tip for those of you who decided to stay. And if you are getting any value out of this video, please hit that like button now. The bonus tip is journaling. I do realize that journaling itself is not a practice of 
patience unless you're doing art journaling. This is more of a tracker. It's designed to track the days that you've lost patience and log what you did about it and how you overcame that situation. What you'll notice when you read back on those days is what happened when you lost your cool what you did about it and how you felt after you did something about it. And then you'll gain insight into your inner workings and you might see that it took you five days to fix it but the awesome thing is that you're smart. You're really smart. And this insight is giving you the power to fix it faster the next time it happens. The goal being to catch yourself being impatient in that moment and then correcting yourself in real time. If you could think of other ways that you can build that patience muscle, leave your suggestions in the comments so that other travelers can read them and grow with you. Thank you so much for having this wonderful conversation with me. May the Great Spirit join you in your travels and give you the patience that you require to overcome all of your obstacles. Travelers, please remember to spread the love that comes from above and I'll see you on our next adventure. Peace.